I like the story about the widow who was 75 years old and her daughter thought, well, maybe she'd like to see if her mom wanted to start dating again. So the daughter set up her mother, the widow, on a blind date. And the man was 95 years old, believe it or not. So that evening after the date, the widow came home and the daughter said, Mom, how did it go? And the widow said, I had to slap him three times. And the daughter says, why? Did he say something inappropriate? And the mother said, no, I thought he was dead. So today we have stories of widows, and they're both the heroes of the readings. The first reading from the book of Kings, the widow from Zarephath, which was in Sidon, it's modern day Lebanon. And this widow is willing to give Elijah some of her food, even though she and her own son were starving to death. Remember, there had been a three-year drought, a three-year famine. And so Elijah had to leave Jewish territory and go to pagan territory. And God said, I will provide for you. And so he said, I will send you to a widow. Of course, that itself is shocking that God would want him to go to the pagan territory. And also that widows, of course, in those days were destitute. There was no social security or government programs to help those who lost their spouses. And this was a, it says, a widow who had a son. And so God sends Elijah to her. Elijah says, give me a drink of water. So she is willing to do that. But as she's going, he says, well, bake me a a loaf of bread. Well, she has to admit that she had just been out there gathering sticks to make a fire to have her last meal with her son because all they had left in this jug was a little bit of wheat, a little flour, and in the jar, just a little bit of oil, just enough for one last meal. And after they would have that, that would be the end. They would then starve to death. Well, Elijah says, okay, well, make me a, she says, do not fear. Trust in the Lord, the true God of Israel. Again, remember, she's a pagan. And Elijah prophesies that if she's willing to feed him first, then God would not allow that jar of flour to go empty or that jug of oil to run dry. And so we have trust. We have the obedience of this pagan woman who has faith in the true God of Israel. And so she does. She makes Elijah the loaf of bread first. And then it says for the next year, until the famine ended, until the rains came, that jar of oil never ran dry and that jug of flour never was emptied. That God provided for this woman because she trusted in the Lord and she put God first. She put the Lord first and the Lord's prophet first. And because of that, she was able, she and her son were able to eat until the famine ended. What a beautiful story of trust and sacrificial giving that this widow did. And this ties in so beautifully with the other reading today, which is the Gospel of St. Mark. And we have here, Jesus sat by the treasury and he watched people putting their donations into the treasury. In those days, according to Josephus and other historians, the treasury was in the court of the women, the Jewish court of the women, and there were 13 treasure boxes. And each treasure box had a funnel coming up from the top of it, which resembled like a trumpet or a horn. And people would take their bags of money, gold or silver, and pour it in. And it would make a lot of noise. And people would look over and say, oh, see who's giving the most generous gifts. It's almost maybe like a slot machine when it goes off. Everybody turns and sees that. Well, Jesus, in fact, would one day say, when you give a gift, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. He says, don't blow a trumpet before you when you give your gifts to God or to the poor. Maybe he's referring to these because they were called the 13 trumpets, these different treasure boxes. Some were from for the taxes for the temple. Others are for the gold in the temple. Others for making a sacrifice of a dove or a pigeon. But notice that Jesus watches people and he sees what they give. And here comes a poor widow. The word in Greek is that she was destitute. She had nothing. The Lord could see that she was a widow. I believe that maybe the Lord thought about 
his own blessed mother, who was a widow at this time, because St. Joseph had died, and Mary herself, I'm sure, was a very simple, humble widow. And she, but I'm sure maybe the Lord thought about his own mother when he saw this, this widow. I like to think of St. Augustine, whose mother, Monica, she was a widow, and she gave the last of her pennies, in a sense, to pray for her son Augustine for 20 years. St. Monica never gave up praying, gave every, everything she had for the conversion of her son. Every last penny, every last prayer she gave for the conversion of her son. Well, this widow has two little coins. They're called leptons. They're even smaller and thinner than like our dime today. And they were worth one 128th of a denarius, which was a day's wage. They say about 1 40th of a penny. So there the, the was the smallest coin that they had in the Jewish faith at that time in the temple. And all, it says that this is all she had to live on. These were her last two cents. And they get, you get the expression, I'll throw in my two cents. This is where that expression comes from. So she's willing to give her last two cents to God. He's lad, all she had left in, in the world were these two little coins. We call them the widow's mite. And she gave them to God. And of course, did the temple need these two little coins? Probably not. The temple was vastly filled with wealth and riches, but it was her sacrifice that pleased God so much. So it wasn't the amount that she gave. So it's not the amount that we give, it's the amount of sacrifice that we give with. And as Mother Teresa says, give until it hurts. Be willing to give sacrificially. So this widow trusted in the Lord and gave the last that she had to live on to dedicate it to God. What a beautiful gift. And my own speculation is that Jesus then told uh, Judas, who had the money bag, to go and give this widow all that they had in their treasury, because people would give Jesus money and the apostles for their food, clothing, and shelter. So it's my guess that Jesus told Judas to give what they had to her, and that she probably lived on that until the, you know, the rest of her life until the Lord called her home. So just as God provided for the widow in, in Sidon in the first reading, I'm sure Jesus provided for this widow in the New Testament because this event occurred on Tuesday of Holy Week. And most likely that evening was when Judas went to the chief priest and said, what will you give me if I hand Jesus over to you? Again, this event occurred, the widow's might occurred on Tuesday of Holy Week, and that seems to be the night that Jesus was betrayed by Judas. Perhaps this was the last straw when Judas thought he had all this money in the apostolic treasury, and Jesus gave it to this poor widow. Again, we don't know that for sure, but that's sort of speculation based upon what Judas did that very night. So I think what we can take from the readings today are these beautiful widows, the true heroes of the story, who were women of faith. They were women of trust, complete trust in God, and they were willing to put God first in their life. And that's a good question for us to examine our conscience when we give our donation each month. For example, you pay, we pay our bills every month of different things that we have to pay our bills. Do we pay God first or do we pay God last? Many Christian families that I know tithe because the Bible recommends giving 10% to God. I know hundreds of families that every month they write the first check to God and give it to the poor, to the charity, to church, whatever, wherever they want to give it. And then they pay the rest of their bills. And so do we pay God first every month or do we pay God last? After we pay all of our other things, do we say, well, we'll just give this to the needy and to the poor or to the, the Lord? So that should be our question today, and I think we should follow the example of these two incredible widows who trusted, who put God first, and of course the truth is that we can never outdo God in generosity. Think of what Jesus did for us. Jesus shed the last drop of his blood on the cross for each one of us. And in fact, the fathers of the church say that the bread and the oil 
that is represented by the widow who baked that bread for Elijah, that represents the church, that Christ would have found the church and he would give us the Eucharist made from flour, made from wheat. And that for the last 2,000 years, God has fed us with the bread of life, with the Eucharist. And that jar of flour has never gone out. It's never run dry in the last 2,000 years in the history of the church. We're going to receive Jesus in just a few moments. And think of that oil. Oil is used in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. And that jar of oil has never gone out in the church. We continue to baptize babies and do confirmations and ordain priests over these last 2,000 years. So God provides for us through the sacraments, through the bread of life, and through these other holy sacraments of the church.